after the social club fight, Lockett was involved in a car accident which stopped him training with the Victorian team the next morning. And that led to even more strife. Tony Lockett, after a meeting with the selectors to discuss the reason why he did not turn up the training last Sunday, uh, left the room and we did discuss it. And Tony Lockett has been dropped from the VFL list. He also, there also has been a recommendation by the Victorian state selectors that Tony Lockett be fined $1,500 uh, for disciplinary actions, not turning up uh, to train last Sunday morning. And he did uh, accept it as a sportsman and as a man, uh, shook hands with all selectors and wished us all the best and said, look out for me, I'll be there on July the 1st when you play South Australia at the MCG. He took it in good spirit. And to top off the month of May, Lockett was again in the wars with the umpires, being reported and suspended, this time for striking the West Coast Eagles' Guy McKenna. When you're in the, in the media a fair bit and you've got a sort of a high profile, I guess uh, people tend to take a little bit more notice of your actions than what uh, they tend to do with other players. So I guess I was just one that was, you know, taking a little bit more notice of than any other one and, and you know, I just got caught out, I suppose. But, uh, it's uh, generally the umpires. I mean, it's always hard for four four to get a free kick. Uh, it must be the bane of your life, really. It's always very hard. But uh, no, I don't think I've had too bad a run, really. Um, I probably give as much as I take, so you know, it, um, it probably evens out after a while. The suspension only served to place the spotlight right back on Lockett, as Melbourne prepared to host the State of Origin clash against South Australia at the MCG. The build-up to the game was enormous. Eventually, over 90,000 people turned out to watch the match. But the big question was whether Lockett, after being fined and suspended from the earlier game that year, would be able to come back, and would the selectors, after a month out of the game, pick him or Hawthorne full forward Jason Dunstall? And as usual, around the state of origin time, Chairman of Selectors Ted Whitten was sure to emphasise the importance of the match. We've just got to have a good look at uh, Tony Lockett to see how much work he has done because we're not, you know, 100% happy that he has done the work necessary to take his place in the side as yet. And we will, you know, take a long time to discuss this tonight after training. Because state football, you really have to be at your peak to be able to oh. keep up with it, don't you? Eddie, you know, you know as well as I do, you've been on tours that this is bigger than big. I mean, club football is big, but the jump and the gap between club football and state football is enormous. And uh, a lot of these players have got to really understand that. Some do, but when you've been out for a, a few weeks or with injury or suspension, to come back, you have had to put in a lot of work in the meantime to get back there. In the end, the Victorian selectors decided that there was room on the forward line for both Lockett and Dunstall. That in the heavy conditions, Lockett would remain in the goal square while the fitter Dunstall would make the leads. From Kilda, star forward, coming back from suspension. A chance to give the Vicks a six-point lead and open the scoring for the day. Lockett stabs and makes no mistake. First goal. In a matter of minutes of the game starting, the plan was a...